And do I have it right? Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's right. go. Welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, January 22nd, 2014. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Emma Mitz of the 37th Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you. Forum. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. During the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your, as your questions or comments. So if you have any questions or comments for Alderman Mitz, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Hi, um, my name is Emma Mitz, 37th Ward Alderman. I have been an uh, elected official for 14 years. I just made my 14 years 1st of January uh, 2014. Um, I sit on um, 10 uh, committees with the city of Chicago um, and I have a array of meetings that we hold. Um, I'm currently working old ward map and the new ward map uh, so I keep my hand pretty busy in trying to help and serve the people of the 37th Ward. Thank you Alderman. Um, can you tell us about any uh, projects that are going on in the award um, maybe with f f education? Yes, ac absolutely. Um, just today um, we had two schools that are, were approved for the 37 ward. One was the ITW David Spear Nova Charter School and the other one was a um, school by the Hands Club. Uh, they just built a youth center um, and now they want to build a school to work with the kids. Uh, and I think it's a great project and as well as um, Noble Charter School, uh, we held community meetings and we know that their uh, support and there is not support, but mainly from the residents of the 37 Ward, which I represent, the community was supportive of the school. They just want their children to get a good education. Uh, they want the children to be engaged and they want to, schools want to make sure the parents are engaged. We don't want to have them not going to school and seeing about the children and um, no one's there to pick a report card. That Those things are not what we're looking for. Uh, we don't have, in particular, we need the charter schools because they can meet the children on their level and at the, the need where they are at. Some have had trouble in their families and, and these teachers are going to work with the kids. And it's nothing uh, nothing taken away again, I say it from CPS because I have CPS schools in my ward. My kids graduated from CPS. But we are in a different uh, time zone now so we have to look at options and choices for families. Thank you, Alderman. Um, what about, you mentioned earlier as we were talking before mm -hmm. the show uh, that you had attended three ribbon cuttings in one day. Can you please t tell us about that? Oh, that was one of the most exciting days of my life because I think a history was made at this particular moment. Uh, we opened uh, a health care facility near North Health Care, uh, Louise Lander, on last month, North Avenue and Cicero. And it's the first health care facility that has been built under the new Obamacare, which was even more exciting. It not only service the residents of the ward, those who have funds, and even those who don't have money, uh, to be able to come and get the health care they need, whether it's prenatal care, whether it's dental care, or just a regular checkup. Um, all the services are provided there. So. I was happy to go to that, as well as open up a school in, in the Hispanic community of the ward, which was the old ward, but I'm still servicing it as well, uh, Christopher House. And that's where we're going to help families to uh, learn how to uh, work together, even if there is not a father in the household. The children, they teach them how to work, and along with the mother, to um, get that level of respect. Uh, and making sure they have the proper nutrition and they provide food and clothing for them. And it's a great, great school, and I'm proud of it. And then I went on to uh, cut a ribbon at um, 
Levan Park. Uh, we created an advisory council there, and the community were excited because for years nothing had been done in the park, and so now we put in a new playground, and we'll continue to look at expanding parks. Parks are very important in neighborhoods, and we shouldn't just allow them to set. So we are moving forward to rebuilding 37 Ward one step at a time. Thank you, Alderman. I believe we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Thank you. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, I have an elderly parent who lives in uh, the ward, and I'm just curious, is there a warming center that I can take them to uh, when the weather gets uh, below uh, 10 degrees? Well, you know, they always have um, the 10 South Kesey location or police and contact the police and fire and they make sure that they get to a warming center. So we definitely don't want our elderly to be at home and can't get to the warming center. In fact, if you call my office, I am so concerned about our seniors. Personally, myself, will do what I can to help out uh, your mother. Give her a call, even in the weather, just to see if she's okay. These are things that we can do, and it don't cost us anything. Thank you, caller, for that question. I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, Alderman. Um, I wanted to ask a question about something you said a few moments ago in terms of the charter schools. Um, I've been hearing, and I guess I'm not really clear, um, from people in the community who say that it is odd that we had to close 50 schools because we couldn't afford them for public schools, but there's money to open up um, new charter schools. And I just wanted to know, because I'm aware that CPS and the city council are different entities, if you've seen some numbers or can just offer some clarity um, to Chicago residents about how that is possible or why that is the best decision fiscally for the city? Well, I'm not saying it's the best decision. Uh, I'm not even saying that it was a good thing to close all the schools. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have one to close. That doesn't exempt me from being uh, concerned about the ones that did close. Um, but what I can do is when an opportunity is presented and there a school is providing $20 million for us uh, from the private sector, no, not at taxpayers' expense, I can't very well see turning down uh, that school, given the fact that we want our children to go to high-quality schools. Uh, and it just so happened, we want a high school in our Austin community, and uh, that's something that our that, that's why I support the school and, and also because the community is supported as well. Thank you, caller, for that question. You're watching CAN TV, a public service brought to you by CAN TV. Today, our host, I'm sorry, today our guest is Alderman Mitz. And I'm sorry, I'm going to be giving you her contact information. Uh, it's 5344 West North Avenue. Mm -hmm. Her phone number is 773 745 2894 and her website is aldermanmits.com um, I'm going to be showing both maps um, Alderman and, and if you can please explain how and, and if I can I, I'm happy to explain this unfortunately uh, we passed a map last year um, because every 10 years the there is a census that's taken and based upon the population that's how we're able to um, divide our wards. And in our community, in the black community, mainly African American, the population dropped off, and whereas the Hispanic community picked up more population. So two wards had to be created uh, so that the, there would be fair representation uh, in these wards. And mainly in 2015, there would probably be a Hispanic who would run and win in that election. So for myself, in my old ward, I had to give up uh, a large portion of my ward, which was Grand to Fullerton from um, Laramie to McVicker. That's a large area. Uh, and then I had to give up some on Grand Avenue to Alderman um, Roberta uh, Maldonado. I'm working the old ward because 36 uh, wards, Nick Spazzato, 
choose not to work and help the people in the area which I was supposed to be losing to give to him. I was supposed to be working in my new area. So for myself, I don't want to make a choice between constituents. I just want to provide the service. So I'm working old ward and new ward. I'm just servicing the people on whatever they need, and if I can provide the service, I'll do just that. And that's a little bit more than what my, a lot of my colleagues are doing. They're able to just move on and work the uh, 52,000 uh, population that they have. And myself, I have to work probably uh, a good 80, 90,000 population so that I can continue to serve the constituents. So out of fairness, the map doesn't take effect until 2015. And it was a way that we were able to go into our new areas, but all the Ottomans didn't agree on that, and then that became a lawsuit based on it. And then the lawsuit was won uh, by the city saying that, okay, we'll go ahead on and move to your new area. But I can't force my colleagues to take the old the area that I'm losing, so I have to work all of it. So is it fair? Well, life is not fair all the time. Thank you, Alderman, for your answer. Thank you, caller, for that question. Um, Alderman, you mentioned, um, I'm sorry, you were, can you tell us about your priorities? Uh, yes. You know, I, when I became Alderman in 2000, January 2000, I had a list and a goal. My priority was first education. Uh, the second one was crime. Third, economic development. And fourth was service. And it's still the same issues from 2000, here's 2014. Those are still my priorities. Education. When you have good education, uh, it changed the um, livelihood and it changed the atmosphere within a community. Not only just the children being educated, but education on every level, and t including government. Uh, I like to make sure our youth understand government. I like for the get them involved in the summer and working program. And you talk about crime. Well, we've had our high peaks and uh, our low peaks. And I don't understand it. And I have worn myself out. And I'm still finding a little energy to keep going and keep trying to find the reason and give the children another alternative other than to stand on the street by holding discussions with them, getting involved um, in the schools. And, and I used to do, um, through the schools, a listening series and listen to the kids and hear what they had to say. Um, the adults talk, sometimes we don't listen. These uh, new days and, and what we had to deal with, they're dealing with much um, bigger problems while they'll be trying to be recruited into gangs and uh, they may not tell someone or young ladies, um, you know, being forced to do things they don't want to do. So we have to listen to them and try to give them some help. Um, then I have a educate when I talked about economic development, I, you remember when I brought the Walmart in uh, back in 2004 when first Walmart come into the city of Chicago. I'm uh, very grateful for that because we did get some services, but that wasn't the only thing that happened. Walmart came in, I ended up getting Menards and CVS, I have a Food for Less, and then we went and got us a Planet Fitness Center so that I, we can get physically fit and be able to energize ourselves. We got uh, new, home, new moms just opened up this year, which was another ribbon where there's teenage mothers raising their children with, to provide them with social service program, place to stay. They only have to pay $100 a month for rent, and then they help them to um, get themselves prepared to go into the work world, learn how to take care of the family, then they can move on. So those are just some of the things that we're doing. Um, can't get it all in in 30 minutes. I just want to let you know I'm proud, though, uh, to be uh, the alderman and a servant for the 37th Ward. Thank you, Alderman. Thank and you. I, I believe we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, yeah. I know you mentioned that you helped get the uh, Walmart in your ward, and I know that's usually done with tax incentives and things like that. Um, and I'm just, I always wondered how, how the math works out on that. Like, how do you decide what reasonable amount is to give to a company to 
hopefully they'll come to the neighborhood and help create jobs in a way that you know actually does benefit the cost the taxpayers more than it sort of costs okay. in, in the long run. Well, for the um, thank you for calling for your question. Uh, Walmart did not receive any tax incentive from the city. Um, that was something they refused. Also, uh, Menard was another company who did not receive any tax incentive from uh, the community because they could carry their own, and I'm glad that they didn't. Um, we wouldn't want taxpayer to think that that they are paying taxes for a company, and then they, um, the company is being scrutinized on every level. Uh, there were a company, however, was uh, Coca-Cola, who received uh, tax incentive from the city. Those are the type of companies that are going to help to create some jobs and uh, build from that in the community. Thank you, Alderman, for that response, and thank you, uh, caller, for that question. Thank you. Alderman, you had some announcements that you wanted to us to show here. Yes, I have my monthly community meeting, which is going to be tomorrow night. We use it uh, from 6 to 8 o'clock. It will be at the By the Hands Club for Kids, located on uh, Laramie 415, I believe, um, on North Laramie. So um, the community, every fourth Thursday of the month, we hold a community meeting. And it gives us a great thing, too, because uh, their business want to come into the ward. Uh, their projects, I can uh, bring them before the community and not make that decision based upon just myself. We can get the input. Um, not only on fourth Thursday of each month, every first Saturday in each month, we have a regular block club president's meeting where I help to educate the block club president of what they can do and how we can come together as a whole and make our entire ward better. So those are some excellent meetings that uh, we have, and I'm proud of them. Thank you, Alderman. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Sure. Yes. Hi. Thank you very much for taking my call. I'm a part of a uh, Chicago group that's concerned about uh, media access, and RCN had their franchise renewed uh, with very good circumstances a while ago, and now it's Comcast's turn, and I believe that needs to be finalized by March. And I wonder uh, if you can give me an update on uh, how the council is doing on uh, coming up with, we need independence and we need a lot of funding uh, to take pro take care of uh, continuation of programs like the one that you're on right now. Thank yeah. you for taking this. Thank you. And you are uh, absolutely right. Um, there are meetings going on now and we're meeting, uh, meetings are being held with the uh, mayor's office and the staff and along with the uh, can TV and Comcast representative. They're trying to work out something that's a little slow going, but um, if need be, the the elected officials, uh, we all should probably uh, get weigh in on this and let the mayor know that we need to keep a program like this uh, open and available because this is a way of getting communication out of what's going on not only in one neighborhood, but in the entire city of Chicago. So I've always appreciate uh, can TV for what they've done, and uh, we want to continue to work to be able to come and share all the good things that's going on. Thank you, Alderman, for You're that welcome. answer. Thank you, caller, for that question. Thank you. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mayor Emanuel announced today that uh, he wants to boost tourism in, in the city by making Chicago North America's City of Lights. I don't know if you heard about that, but it's uh, basically a, a big venture where at night, you know, it's going to light up the whole city. Now, with uh, Chicago being a caps, uh, very cash-strapped city, um, and the city will have to put some of this bill, uh, what's your take on this? Well, I can't really say because I'm, I'm just hearing it from you. I haven't heard that uh, yet, but uh, it's something I guess we can look into, and I don't know what it means, uh, light up the city at night or what that meant. Thank you, caller, for that question. Yep. Alderman, you wanted yep. to talk about some other announcements regarding uh, taxes? Uh, yes, we have um, the Earned Income Tax Credit Office is open in the city uh, hall now, and people who are looking to file the tax, let me tell you, you don't have to all pay someone. 
Uh, you can call that um, number, 311 can give you the information. Or if you just come, come to City Hall, they can be able to get you the help that you need and making sure that you get that earned income tax credit. And um, the system is available for you. So we are hoping that many would take advantage of this opportunity, uh, getting someone involved, that accountability. Um, not saying others don't, but this is a sure way of having accountability. So go online and find out the earned income tax credit and do your research and you may find that you might like that. And the other uh, announcement I wanted to make, within the Austin community, uh, primarily in the 37th Ward, we have three police districts, 15th, 11th, and the 25th. So in the 15th district, uh, Maybe a week ago, we had a young lady that were on um, Augusta Boulevard, something like 5,300 baht, where some young man tried to lure her into the car. So we want to make sure our community stay alert. Uh, you can always uh, holler for help. There's tips that you can follow, what you need to do, call 911, um, scream as loud as you can. And mainly is to make sure that you don't walk alone. Um, then just after that incident, just on the Friday, there were another incident that someone tried to lure a young lady into the car. We do have the description of all these information. If you'd like to get that information, I believe I've had it posted on my website. But you can also call the office and we'll send the information to you. We have sent it out to mainly the Black Club president list and the constituent that we have trying to get the information out so all of us can be more aware of our surroundings. So I just wanted to get that out, uh, make sure everyone try to stay safe. Thank you, Carla, for that question, and thank you, Alderman, for that answer. You're watching Political Forum, brought to you as a community service for, by Can TV. If you have any questions for Alderman, please call us at 312 738 1060. Alderman, um, we're getting ra ready to wrap up the show. Are there any final words that you would like to tell the viewers? Yes, I would, like to, <clears throat> I would like to tell the viewers, first of all, that we need to promote peace. Peace needs to be promoted within us first. Let it be within us and then we can pass it on to others. We shouldn't be living in a society where you have to be angry all day. You can't say hello to someone who passing by. First of all, we don't know who it is that may be able to help us. Um, look, listen, and learn. Uh, be diligent in reading to know what you need to know for yourself. Don't always let somebody just tell you something. Ask them where can you find it because that's a double dose of information to go into the brains and then you can store it up uh, as knowledge. And knowledge is power. So uh, those are things I want to say. They are small things, but they mean so much. Um, give your kids a hug. Tell them you love them. You may not get that chance later. So thank you very much for all that Can TV do. Thank the residents of the 37th War. I'll continue to work on your behalf day in and day out because I love you. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. If you need to reach Alderman Mitz, um, again, her contact information is 5344 West North Avenue, 773-745-2894, and her website is aldermanmitz.com. Thank you for watching Political Forum. Our telephone technician for today has been Steve. Please join us for another edition of Political Forum next Wednesday. Have a good evening.